grow. Because yeah. I ain't come to do nothing outside yeah. the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I can't do nothing on my own. Yeah. If the Holy Ghost ain't doing it, I ain't trying to make it. I'm not at the Apollo. Uh, I'm not giving you a show. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. The anointed one. To pray. You're not even here to just look at me. But Lord, all of us can't get with the need. All of us got needs. And if you don't, you really do need. When you look about what happened, amen, this week. Uh, in California. And if you go further back, you look like what happened past. But I think about the old folks that sang that song. Yeah. There's a storm out there. Okay. And it's blowing this way. Yeah. There's a storm out on the ocean. <laughs> and it's blowing this way. Yeah. It's the oh. ain't got souls yeah. yeah. Ain't got time just to look. Yeah. And check your text out. Because yeah. yeah. it ain't Jesus texting you. All right. Hallelujah, you don't have time for that. You need to get in the way. So when the storm comes your way, yeah. as the woman of God said, you know how to put your feet <laughs> flat footed, uh -huh. amen, yes. and stand straight. straight. You may be, oh, but you won't break. Yeah. Oh, you'll be like the Florida palm. So when the wind is blowing, yeah. oh, when the wind is gone, when the wind seats, you're able to stand up. That's right. In the midst of a hill yeah. life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. These are the times that try men's souls. These are the times, amen. I'm going to take you straight into the word of God, amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for being here, amen. We do honor God, our Lord and our Savior. We do honor, amen, the, uh, the man of this house, amen, the apostle, the first lady, and the overseer, amen, apostle uh, Butler, amen. And then all those that's on the pulpit. Amen. Overseer Williams and Heather Rams. Uh, amen. And to all those in the fivefold ministry that are perhaps sitting out there. Amen. You know who you are. Amen. Amen. You know who you are and whose you are. Amen. And that is enough. More than enough. And we thank God for each and every one of you for coming here to help celebrate as we honor. Amen. The woman of God. Amen. I go way back with all of them. Amen. And I first came to Augusta from New York and they were, they were some singing machines. I say they need to sing your socks off. Amen. Amen. And then I found, they in the Baptist They out of place somewhere. I said, oh, Baptist people sing like that? You know, the anointing with a voice like that? But look how God has moved them up and elevated them. We thank God. Amen. Because God have us in a place for a season. Yes. And you didn't know when your season is up. That's right. It's time for you to get up and get out. Yes. Amen. Yes. And get to moving, get to stepping the way God. Amen. So we honor God today. We honor God for the great work and the mighty work that's going on right here in the on Division Street. I want to go to uh, Descriptive first. <laughs> Thessalonians. Two and four. Amen. I want to direct your attention as a female, amen. As a woman of God. As I as I told, Amen, uh, Apostle Butler, I said she already put two layers on this cake here. I don't know how many layers y'all want. I don't know how many layers you want. She already I'm put the layer on here. She was preaching. Amen. And she got so good that's all right now. You you dipping in my message here. <laughs> but I said that's all right. Because when we on one accord, the Holy Spirit flows. Just flow with the anointing. That's all. Just flow with the anointing. Amen. I want you to pull on me, but as you pull on me and as you're sitting there, sit there with an open heart. No restriction and limitation. Amen. You don't have to necessarily wait. I need to tell my people, it's not all the time you're going to wait till the altar call. If you're sitting there, you have a need. Amen. Come on now. Lay your hands on yourself and heal your own self. Amen. Hallelujah. Or oh, somebody next to you say, Are you saying when you feel what you have? Amen. What you working with? Amen. Pray with me right here, right now. So by the time that the altar call, 
It's called, amen, you already here. You already met the need, so you can come and just proclaim what the Spirit of God has ministered unto you. Am I correct on that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we, amen, as we read, and I'm going to read in the IV version. And it says, hallelujah. Amen. Will you stand? Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to, amen. Someone read in the King James. Who has the King James? the King James? Read it. Read, uh, Read uh, four. Verse four. Yeah, first. Verse four. Yeah. Verse four. Uh, yes. But as we were allowed of God to put in trust with the gospel, so even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Read the next one. For neither at any time use we flattering words. As we know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is with us. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for his word, and his word is already blessed. You may be seated. Hallelujah. And I would like to read it, amen, in the NIV. And it reads on this line. It says, on the contrary, uh -huh. we speak as those approved by God. To be entrusted with the gospel. Uh -huh. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests us, uh -huh. who search our heart. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They don't want to go back because he explaining himself here. You need to know why he's explaining himself. And it will come uh, as we go on. Uh, it says, so friends, it is obvious, starting at that first verse, it says, friends, it is obvious that our visit to you was no waste of time. We have just been given rough treatment in Philippi, mm -hmm. as you know, but that didn't slow us down. Right. We were sure of ourselves in God and went right ahead and said our peace, representing God's message to you. Defiant of the opposition. I like that part. All Defiant right. of the opposition. No hidden agendas, though. God tested us thoroughly to make us sure we were qualified to be trusted with this message. Uh -huh. Be assured that when we speak to you, you are not after, we are not after crowd approval. Only God approval. Mm -hmm. Since we've been put through that battery of tests. Uh -huh. Underline that. Mm -hmm. Battery of tests. Mm -hmm. You are guarantee that both we and the message are free of error. Mm -hmm. Myths, motives, or hidden agendas. We never use words to butter you up. Right. No one knows what that better than you. And God knows we never use words as a smoke screen to take advantage of you. All right. You might say, why is he saying all of that? Well, he's just coming back. He's landing, amen. Uh, the background, you look at verse first first and the second verse, Paul and Silas is referring to the ministry they had left in Philippi. It was an experience, one that we always talk about. <laughs> but it was an experience like none of us. Hallelujah. Well, what happened there? They, they left there with about uh, um, they traveled to to minister uh, to that's uh, Monica, and that was about 100 miles. Uh, and he was explaining what they went through. 
the toll that they went through, the abuse, if you look at that first verse, and the mistreatment. Well, you might say, well, what was the mistreatment? Well, that was a place where they were preaching the gospel. Uh -huh. They were stripped down, they were beaten with rods. Mm. They were fastened to the dungeon folk. It's not like you were pretty prison that they have now. Yeah. So they went to the innermost part of this dungeon yeah. because that's how threatened they were. And they fastened their feet. They wanted to make sure they, were, they weren't comfortable at all. Mm. After being really beaten with rods. Can you imagine rods? Not these little puny little meaty little things. But it was beaten down. Uh, uh, why? Because he was calling on the name of the Lord. But Paul pressed on to a high calling in Jesus. And you might say, well, after all that beating, he didn't complain, he didn't give up, he didn't go on the side and say, Lord, this is too much for me to bear. But he pressed on to a high calling in Jesus. What makes one press on? What keeps you pressing on in the fight? What keeps you in the church? In spite of what you have to step over to get to church. What keeps you keep calling on the name of the Lord? There's an inner part, an inner drive in you. It was in Paul. That inner passion, that unction of the Holy Spirit that gives you the determination, the resiliency, the relentless, the perseverance, the drive and the press forward onto the mark of the prize of the high court. Yes. That's what was in all. And in Acts 17, it references uh, that testimony. Because in that prison in Solidify, it talks about, and we already know, that they were in jail after being beaten and blooded. Amen? Hallelujah. It was beaten and battered. And then inside that prison, that's where they were. But know what they did? They sang and they prayed in the house. They lifted their hands. They gave us a bop praise. Uh, and they gave God the glory. And they gave him the praise. And after a while, as they were praying, to so see something, that's why the devil don't want you to come to prayer service. Because he knows when your voice sounds. It trembles. It terrifies the devil. When you pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When you get in your ballroom, something begins to happen in the spiritual realm. The atmosphere begins to shift when you pray. And what happened when they were praying in prison? That wasn't a conducive place for them to pray, but they didn't stop. They know who they were and who they were. So what happened? Earthquake. That's why you need to have a song in your heart when you're going through. You need to have something. Amen. Don't stop. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They use that opportunity to witness. And, uh, all of a sudden, when that earthquake began to shake and shake the jail loose and shake their chains off, amen. That's all you have to pray. God, do exceptionally. I, I want us to stop believing what we say, that God is able to do exceptionally and secretly more than we ask. We need to stop believing now. Not saying it with the mouth of believing in those prayers. That action press you to move, to show the manifestation that you say what you believe and believe what you're saying. And you will see the manifestation of the Lord when you start speaking those things. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me go home. So therefore, all of a sudden, the jailers stop being afraid. Okay, the prisoners are getting out. They're getting away. But they didn't do all that. <coughs> they used that opportunity to witness. Yeah. And they say these famous women have no fear. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. We are all here. Yeah. We all here. Because they are genuine, not they stink tales. They are genuine, they preach the Lord by any means necessary. Yes. Paul continued to preach the gospel. Amen. In Thessalonica, Jesus' death, his burial, burial, and his resurrection. Jesus is the Messiah. He preached. That's what got them all upset. But they don't know the Messiah. They were living for him. And so someone to come, they, he was preaching, he was getting them all upset. Paul, in fact, upset the city. That one city in Philippi, they upset it so. And they had an uproar. And the people said, These are the men. They were shattered. They were afraid. They said, These are the men that turned the world upside down. That was a representation. You're talking about two men, Paul and Silas. What is your reputation on your job? Are you bringing down heaven or are you bringing down hell? What are you bringing down on your job? When they see you step in the door, oh, they say, oh, Lord, look at that hell raiser. Oh, they say, that's a woman. 
woman of God. That's the man of God. What is your reputation? Your reputation. These are, these are the men that upset the world. It wins. Yeah. Oh, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. These men that turn it upside down, uh, they were affirming amen to that earthquake. Yeah. It sent a wave over. Naturally, it was a natural wave, and all of a sudden, it was a spiritual wave around the world. People far, as they say, in you knew that something would happen in Philippi. Ah, hallelujah. What a reputation. Paul was not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. But yes. he is a power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to, to the Jew first, to the Greek. Uh, uh, ashamed me that I'm not disappointed, although I'm being boot, beaten and I'm being bruised and I'm battered, but I'm not ashamed. I will not shut up. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I shut up on my head more too. Uh, uh, with all that Paul been through, I still have joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, talking about Paul that used to be a soul. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Paul that used to be a soul. Uh, he was a uh, Amen. Uh, he was extraordinary. He was uh, 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 confident. He was bodacious. He was dauntless in what he was teaching in his preaching. That's what he was before he came to Christ. He was ruthless. He didn't care who you were, male or female, children, boy or girl. He didn't care. He knew that he thought he thought he was doing the right thing when he would go and kill all the Christians because they were defying the laws and the leaders of their time. So he didn't care. He was 